Well, hello, my friends. We are at day 29. Day 29. Uh, we are getting closer and closer to Easter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the devotion for today. But since we're getting so close and the stories are now really moving towards crucifixion, I'll tell you what the scriptures are, but then I'm just going to read them straight through. And then you can flip through your own Bibles, right? And, and then find the breaks. But I want to keep the story going. All right, so we're going to look at Matthew 26, 36 through 39. We're going to look at Luke 22, 43 through 44. And Matthew 26, 40 through 46. And Hebrews 5, 7 through 9. So again, Matthew 26, 36 through 39. Luke 22, 43 through 44. Matthew 26, 40 to 46. And Hebrews 5, 7 to 9. And when you read your devotional by yourself today over and over, I would suggest to you that once you start reading the scriptures, read them all the way through. Don't break to um, announce to yourself what the scripture is. Just keep reading. It's going to complete a it's going to make a make a complete story. So here we go. Day 29. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet... Not as I will, but as you will. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them. And he went away once more and prayed a third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the, to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come, and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Here's the meditation. Jesus said, keep watch with me. If you've ever sat with a loved one while waiting for that person to die, Perhaps you know something of how the three men who waited with Jesus might have felt. He had told them repeatedly that he was going away, but now they see him in anguish, and they can see that it is all starting to happen, and perhaps in a more terrible way than they had imagined. They could not understand what would come in the next few days. So the waiting was full of dread, the dark kind of sadness that feels unbearable. Jesus said, my soul is overwhelmed to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. But instead, they fell asleep. Still, if we disparage the disciples for their inability to stay awake, maybe we haven't spent enough time thinking about this scene. And maybe we have never prayed to the point of exhaustion. There is a point at which our circumstances can no longer be examined. 
there is a point after which a person can pray no more. This is when the Holy Spirit must take over for us through wordless groans, perhaps even while we sleep. Jesus asked God three, three times to take away the suffering that was coming, not just the torture and ridicule, but the unbearable thought of facing all of God's wrath at once. The father's hatred for sin, all falling at once on the head of his innocent son. But Jesus followed his request with, may your will be done. When we ask God for something three times and he does not give us what we want, we are often angry and begin to question his goodness. And when our friends fail us, we may want to find new friends. But Jesus, even as he faced the beginning of the most the beginning of the most terrible time that ever was on earth, went back to encourage the friends who had failed him and to face his mission before God, the price of our salvation. See, it's easy to blame those disciples for falling asleep, but we don't know what exhausted them. We know they were praying. Maybe they were prayed out. We don't know. But it's easy to put someone else down until we've gone through that experience. Here's the prayer. Loving Father, I gripe and grumble when I encounter painful circumstances. I complain about bad luck or not getting the breaks in life. I wonder why you allow such pain to occur to me and to others. Yet, I know that I can take my grievances directly and openly to you. I can admit my confusion and my disappointment. I know I am approaching the only one who can really do something in my times of need. Thank you for your patience and your kindness to me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. It's getting real now, isn't it, folks? It's getting real. That was day 29. Let's keep on working. Let's keep on doing the work. Let's do the work. Let's keep on reading. Remember, say your do your devotions out loud. Meditate on those words. Say them over and over until they, they stir up your spirit. They will. It's the power of the word of God. All right, folks, I'm going to run on and do the next thing. I'm glad that we just finished day 29. Remember, like, comment, and subscribe. We need you all the time to like, comment, and subscribe, if you will. Thank you very much, and good night.